Welcome back to Still a Part of Us. We um, are back here again with Stacy, and she just told us the the sweet and peaceful story of Carson, um, her son. Um, so Stacy, thank you again for being here with us today. Yes. So Carson was born at 34 weeks. Um, he was still born. We don't know what happened to him. Um, that was February of 2023. So a little over a year ago, about 15 months ago. Yeah. And, and still, I mean, that first year I think is so, so incredibly hard. And, um, I'm, I'm actually curious to um, ask you about like how that first little bit was, and then also how it's been kind of after, I, I feel like the two or three months is always just really, really hard. Um, yeah. So can those you first tell- couple of months were, um, the good part is, you know, that's when you get all the support. Um, yeah. You know, if people are sending things, which is great, but it was also the darkest time too, yeah. I would say. Um, just, you know, it's hard to get out of bed some days, Yeah. but having a toddler, two and a half year old, I had to still, you know, be there for her. So just kind of finding those moments to, you know, put my mom hat on and then yeah, my grief hat on. So just, I remember just wanting to go on walks all the time, Mm. (laughs) go on walks and read books and anything that I could connect with at that point was super helpful. So yeah. Did you, um, go back what was your your works policy because you are a teacher and I um it is also extremely tricky because a stillbirth is not considered a birth in the uh insurance eyes a lot uh the government's eyes a lot and and I know there there's movements to change that so how did that work for you so I they told me they were my school has been this whole past year has been amazing. Um, They jumped right in. I didn't have to make sub plans or anything while I was gone, which is huge. Um, The teachers I work with um, helped me with that. Um, Amazing. They told me I could take as long as I needed. So I never felt pressured to go back. Um, But I'm a very much routine person. Yes. So um, I waited about a month to go back. So um, they, the kids had gone on spring break about a month after we lost Carson. And I thought that that would be a good time to come back that Monday after. And the other great thing is my principal said, you know, you could come back and you could change your mind. You know, you can, he's like, you could get to school Monday and decide, nope, like I'm not ready. So I think that was helpful too, just knowing like if I tried to go back, you Mm -hmm. know, and I wasn't ready. I could, you know, take more time if I needed. Yeah. So that's and amazing. that seemed to be about a month was a good amount of time to, you know, have that time just to grieve. And I think by that month point, I was ready to, you know, try to step a little bit back into routine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it really does feel like it. Well, at least for me, and it was routine was huge for our family to be able to feel just a tiny bit of a little bit of normalcy or something, right? Like it's, yeah. um, and I know you don't, shouldn't distract yourself too much while grieving, but it, a little distraction is very, very helpful. Yeah. Like just during the school day, just to have my teaching hat on and, yeah. you know, that was my job and my purpose. And, yeah. and of course, like my job, I just, I, it's more of just, it's, I love it. So it's, not, it wasn't a pain to go back or anything. Yeah. It was just, mm-hmm. it was actually very helpful. And, um, my school with my permission, they, um, sent out an email to all, it's a very small school. Mm -hmm. Um, so everyone knew I was pregnant. So they sent out an email with my permission, just kind of explaining what had happened. Um, and then they went into the classrooms to talk to the kids about what had happened, um, with, you know, letting the parents know they would be doing that. And so when I came back, everyone knew, you know, all my students knew and yeah, it just made it so much easier. I didn't have to repeat what had happened because mm-hmm. everyone knew what had happened. If that makes sense. Yeah. How were the kids? Were they, um, would any of them talk to you about it or anything? Oh yeah. They wanted to talk about him a lot. And of course, oh. um, I love talking about him. So, yeah. and they weren't afraid to ask about him. And yeah. I liked that, you know, it was just a normal conversation. Like, and they would, they would say the sweetest things like, you know, they're just very much like, I'm so sorry your baby died. Like, yeah. you know, um, can we see a picture of him? They, it's 
like they have that they they say what other people don't know if they can say yeah and I, I loved it you know of course there were a lot of you know and I'm I'm a teacher so I um what happened to him like they mm-hmm. wanted to know mm-hmm. and you know I just had to say I I, I don't know yeah I don't know what happened um and they were you know that's kind of hard for them to hear like I don't you know what like there should be a reason yeah yeah um, but yeah they were so good and they actually you know first and second grade they give the best hugs so oh, yeah give all the love and um yeah my school is like my family too so mm-hmm. my coworker Ellen my friend Ellen who I teach with she re- pretty quickly after it had happened um they had gathered cards and donations and gift cards all of these things um and brought them over to my house oh. which was and cards from the kids that they had you yeah. know drew pictures and um one of them, I think, said, fly high, baby Carson. Oh, that is the cutest. <laughs> yeah, just those. I have a box of all of that stuff from them because I just felt so supported by them. And um, they had also gone, um, Ellen and Jenna, the teachers I work with, they had gone to pick out a wind chime as oh. a gift from the school. Yeah. Um, and they said they went to the flower shop and they picked it out and They went up to the counter to, um, you know, pay for it and they put it in its box and the company the wind chime was from was called Carson. What? (laughs) Same exact spelling. So they brought it in the box to me and it has Carson like literally all over it. Just Carson, 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 Carson. That is cool. Yeah. So they were, that was really special. Yeah. Um, Just a crazy like coincidence, like story, a sign, a coincidence, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. A little wink from your little, son. Oh God, a little God wink. Yeah. Yep. That is cool. Like, um, I I love that little kids are so just open. And yeah. you, like you said, they will ask the things that you as adults sometimes are not sure that you should ask, but they're like, they just want to know. So like, what's the big deal? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That is wonderful. And it you really only had, I guess, uh, just a month or two after, right? Before you got out for the yeah, summer. Yeah, so then, then it was a quick turnaround then before summer. So okay. it was actually worked out that I did only have a short amount of time. Yeah, okay. Left after that. Did you do okay? Did you feel like you did okay at school? I think so. I think I'm the kind of person I can really, you know, like put one hat on and, yeah. you know, be directed at that. And yeah, I, I think it was it was hard, but, um, Mm -hmm. I would go home pretty tired just cause, you know, like not that I felt like I couldn't, you know, Mm -hmm. show my emotions, but it was just, I'm very good at just like, okay, I'm teaching right now. Like Mm -hmm. going home and being a mom and then taking, making sure I took the time to still grieve (laughs) because it's never ending. Yes. Never ending. And it, and (laughs) having it bottled up is not great. So how did your husband, um, Brad, did he end up, um, taking a bit of time off as well? I know that that's always a little trickier also, you know, with paternity leave, that's another, you know, another discussion. Um, but yeah, was he, he able took, to take um, some time off? His, I don't think they, he got, I think because of it was a stillbirth. So mm-hmm. that would be something that would be nice to change. He didn't get the, like right now, like when we had Sophie, he got two weeks off okay. paid. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he got that, but he took time off. Good. Um, okay. And he got bereavement time. And um, okay. I think he ended up taking two or three weeks. Okay. Great. Uh, so a good amount of time. And, but he too was, he needed to get back to work mm-hmm. for his own sake, you know? Yeah. Get back into the swing of things. So, yeah. Have you noticed any differences in how you and, he um will grieve. Uh, I know that there's always a lot of differences and you mentioned it in the birth story too, that you're just like, there were some times that I was crying and then I'd be okay. And then he would be crying. And so, yeah, I like what, yeah, I guess what differences I think at first it was easier because not easier, but I think we were both just so heavily grieving. Yeah. We were both, you know, on the same page, but then I think he was more, you know, quick to like, you know, let's, you know, not move on, but like he didn't talk about Carson as much and mm-hmm. I would talk more about him. And I think we just started grieving differently as yeah. the months went on. And, mm-hmm. and I had to learn to, you know, not judge his grief yeah. based on my grief. Yeah. Um, I think was huge. And I think someone had told me that at one of the support groups I went to is 
you know, he's not going to grieve like you grieve. And yeah. it's something you just have to learn to understand each other. Mm-hmm. And just because he wasn't openly crying or talking about Carson doesn't mean that he wasn't missing him or grieving him. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yes. There's just very, I, I think we just need to give each other a break about <laughs> Yeah. How, how we do things. We're all just very different people. So you did mention that you went to a support group. What are some things that did help and has helped um, through this 15 months since you lost him? Yeah. So we have a um, organization here in Iowa called No Foot Too Small. Mm-hmm. So I was directed to that pretty quickly um, by several people. And I had, I had known about it before too, because um, of my friends that had gone through loss. Um yeah but they have um, monthly virtual um, support groups and then a few in-person ones Mm -hmm. throughout the year. So I found that very helpful to be able to tell Carson's story and to listen to other stories. So I found that extremely helpful. And they also just do so many cool things to celebrate our angels. So Mm -hmm. they have a gala every year where you get all dressed up and they um, have a set of angel wings with that. You can have a feather with your baby's name on it that travel oh. around Iowa. Oh, um, they, we just went recently to, it's called angels in the outfield, a baseball game. And yeah. we got to go out with his sign and just, it really has brought a lot more joy to mm-hmm. our grief. I would say is just being able to talk about Carson and be with people that really understand. Yeah. So Yeah, Um, I found that huge, just connecting with people that have been through what we have. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's why I connected with your podcast so much when I found I listened to every single episode because that's just what helped me. I wanted to hear other people that have been through it and what they did, what helped them, what didn't. And it really helped me navigate this past 15 months. Yeah. Just knowing what other. Yeah, because I love these advice episodes. I I love talking to people because I was like, oh, I have some unresolved grief that I need to deal with. And and just how some people have worked on theirs. I was like, oh man, I, I'm going to try that. And I just uh, so appreciate it. Cause yeah, you're like, I'm not alone in this. And there are others that have, can lend their experience to, to my situation. And I so great. Yeah, and they're actually that. in July, they're doing, they have a golf tournament that they do and they asked us to be the feature family. So oh, I'll cool. get to share Carson's story on the microphone at that. So That's this is so good great. Um, to help me prepare for that. Yes. <laughs> You will do so great. I just, I think that is any way we can, you know, see his name or honor him is huge. And I think that's helpful just to remember, be able to remember him. Yeah. Well, and, and, and also kind of very happy or happier ways, right? Because a lot of our memories that we have with our kids, um, that, that we've lost are kind of tinged with sadness. And, and so, So that's kind of cool that you're like, oh yeah, I get to feature him at this this um, yeah. golf tournament. Because, yeah, it's just brought a lot more joy to everything. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think as time goes on, there's days that I'm sad, there's days that I'm okay, but it's nice that, you know, I'm probably never going to be the same as I was, but yeah, at mm-hmm. least I can find joy in life still. Yeah. And joy well, in Carson, not just the sad moments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That sounds like a cool organization. Um, any other things, or uh, I guess maybe any things that your those around you uh, did that you kind of want to shout out? I always like this part. I, it sounds like you had your your coworkers are amazing. Your principal was amazing, um, yeah. and your mom and dad, your in laws, seem to be right there for you and and giving you also yeah. space too. It seems like. Yeah, yeah. It seems like we were just getting support from. I mean. I was like, gosh, I forgot we know this many people because everyone in their own special way was doing something, whether it was Mm. sending flowers or they started a meal train um, that people could sign up for. So we had different people from school, from our family, friends, just sending us gift cards for that and meals, which was so helpful because the last thing I wanted to do was be trying to figure out what to feed the family in those first weeks. So I would say that was huge. And that's such an easy thing to set up to for anyone that yeah. wants to do something helpful. I will say we got so many floors and I loved every single one of them, but I would look at them and I remember just thinking, oh, these are going to die. These are going to die. And I don't have much of a green thumb. So I just remember I was like, I've got to do something with these like because mm-hmm. they're just going to die and then I'm going to have to throw them out. So um, my friend Kayla, she had said she dried their flowers out. Oh. and kept them. So, yeah. um, again, I 
just from hearing what someone else did, I did that too. So there's a piece from every little plant or bouquet we got and I dried it out oh. and then I put it into a little shadow box. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. So, and that was my way of like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to keep all of these mm-hmm. and they're going to mm-hmm. die, but, but I still have a piece of all of them that yeah. I can look back on. And, th- and, and just think of the support. I think that is yeah. so cool. Yeah. And I think, yeah, any, anyone that sent anything like cards um, mm-hmm. and literally anything, memorial, you know, I got so many beautiful pieces of jewelry and um, mm-hmm. I swear someone could have sent me a potato and wrote Carson on it. And I would have just <laughs> probably just been the happiest person yes. ever looking at that. So literally anytime someone was thinking of him, yeah. made me feel a little bit better. So. That's so sweet. Yeah. That's- <laughs> People are, people are incredibly kind and, and you just you appreciate. Just, yeah. You just, re- you, you know, you have incredible people, but then like when they really are there for you, it's just, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. You just, it really oh, is. just feeling showered and supported and, and loved is yeah. So, so helpful. Because it is those. a tricky situation and, you know, I didn't know how people, everyone would respond. Like I mm-hmm, didn't know, mm-hmm. you know, if they would consider it the same as losing like a one-year-old or yeah. five, you know, it's just a different situation that you know, yeah. I didn't know what to expect from people around me and they exceeded my expectations. So. They, they were there and that is great. <laughs> um, anything that you, uh, that you would maybe recommend not saying or not doing that was a little hard for you as a, as a grieving mom, is there anything that, um, that you just wanted to point out? Maybe not calling anybody out per se, but just anything yeah. that is not as yeah, helpful. And- Again, nothing that was like ever like directed to make us feel bad, but of course, just a yeah. few things that I didn't find helpful. Like um, everything happens for a reason and it was God's plan. And the hard thing about those is I, I truly believe that I going through this, these 15 months, I believe that, but it wasn't helpful at first when people said that, because yeah. it's like, they almost like they wanted to make me feel better or like I should feel better about the situation. Yeah. So, um, cause even though I believe that everything happens for a reason and I, my faith is so strong, it, I just didn't find those statements to be helpful. Yeah. Um, and then yep. any statement that starts with at least, <laughs> yes. and I, I've heard that on your yes. podcast before, but it's so true. Any, any time, at least, at least, yep. or at least you weren't 40 weeks or at least, you know, yeah. you didn't get, you know, it wasn't at a least. few weeks, you know, again, yep. It's just people trying to make you feel better. And I yeah. did appreciate that. Um, but that, yeah, anything with that least. Or, yeah, that or is a should, great way to do any, it. At least or you should. Anyone tell oh. me you should do this. Like, oh, <laughs> which um, I didn't. Yeah. Like you should do this or you should do mm. like I just I didn't find that very helpful. I yeah. Felt like they thought I should be doing something that I necessarily didn't feel like was helpful. Or, oh, okay. But. Well, that's, that's interesting. I've never heard that before, but you're right. Like, cause it feels like they're directing you on how to grieve or how to process things or, uh, and again, yeah. it was just trying to be helpful. Yes. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people, they kind of just ignore the situation and don't mm. want to say anything. And I can really relate to that because I remember before this, I was that person. I thought that if I didn't say anything, I wouldn't make them sad. Or um, if I just didn't bring it up, they wouldn't be thinking about it. So I really resonate with people that didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. So um, I think by me being so open about it, like um, on Facebook and just posting about Carson, talking about him, I think that gave more people like they knew that it was okay to talk. Yes. Like I specifically said, please do talk to me about him. So they didn't have to guess does she want to talk about him or not? Like I let them know that I want to. So I think that was, and I, cause I didn't really run into that too much where people, maybe people I didn't know very well and that was fine, but no one really close to me ever um, seemed to be doing that. And I think it was because helpful that I let them know what I needed and what I wanted. I think, I think that's the key is, uh, uh, yes, I think you can tell people that they have permission to talk about your your baby. And I think that's good. Um, just because they just don't know what to do. Yeah. Cause you're like, I don't know how to help you. And yes. yeah. Um, Nobody wants to help. They just, and sometimes in, there really isn't anything you can do. There's nothing you can do to fix a situation. No. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And I think just, people know that and they just, they want to find anything that they can to help. And I right. really appreciate anything that was ever done or said in hopes to help me. Yes. <laughs> or to yes. Just brighten my day. So. Yeah. They were just thinking about you and I, I, you always have to just kind of remember, yes, they are well-intentioned and well-meaning and it might yes. just not come off exactly the best um at the timing the timing is everything actually I feel like yeah. <laughs> some of the like you said some of those statements that you said you're like I do I, I I truly believe also there is a reason for everything to happen but I had to come to that conclusion on my own I yeah. I, I didn't need somebody to tell me that I'll get there it'll take yeah. me a minute but I will get there and I know some people you know right away are you know okay with that and then yeah other people like Cause I just, one thing I remember my priest said to us when he was up in the hospital was it's okay to be angry with God. And that was huge for me, oh. like giving me permission. It's okay to be yeah. upset. That yeah. was, that stuck with me a lot because yeah, just that statement really mm-hmm. stuck with me. It's okay yeah. to be angry and it's okay to be upset. And I think whenever anyone said like, you know, I don't know what to say, like they said, I don't know. And I, I appreciated that because mm-hmm. yeah, it's hard to know what to say. So yeah. just trying to, or move. just, I'm here for you. Let me know what you need. Kind of let me lead the way mm-hmm. a little bit. Again. Mm-hmm. Yep. This has been so, so helpful. I, um, I know that you had mentioned to me that you had, um, a letter that you had written to Carson. Would you like to share that with us now? Yes. Yes, I will. So this is a post I wrote on Carson's first birthday. So Um, February of 2024, February 15th. Mm -hmm. Dear Carson, February 14th, 2023 was the worst day of my life. I was told you no longer had a heartbeat. My world as I knew it was completely shattered. February 15th, 2023, we got to meet you, say hello and goodbye, hold you for the first and last time, take pictures and try to squeeze a lifetime of memories into a few short hours. This is a day we will always cherish and remember you. Meeting you was one of the greatest moments of my life. Since that day, your presence is with us. Some days in subtle ways and other days you are loud and clear. We see you in the sky, sunrises, sunsets, the stars, and perfectly timed rainbows. Callie always tells me how beautiful you painted the sky for us. We see you in nature, specifically eagles and ladybugs. We see you when Callie's face lights up as we visit you at the cemetery or when she sees your light shining through the window. She is such a proud big sister. We see your light continue to shine through our amazing community of family, friends, and strangers who go out of their way to make sure we feel supported and to keep your memory alive. In memory of you, I will show someone kindness today. I will go out of my way to make someone's day better. You have taught me so much about myself in life, and I will make sure to make every second count down here. I hope I am making you proud until we meet again. Love, Mom. That was beautiful. I love that you as a family look out for him in little ways. Eagles and ladybugs. It's just yeah. so sweet. <laughs> Stacy, thank you so much for sharing Carson with us and and also lending some some experience and and advice to th- today with us. That was so so helpful and uh, I think gave me a number of ideas of how I can support people better too. On my like, I'm always surprised. I'm like, I am not very good at this, despite the fact that I have a podcast that talks specifically about this kind of thing. So, um, so thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, is there any last bit of advice or any last little anything you'd like to um, share with us about Carson or supporting others going through this? I just think whenever you can support someone, do it because that's all everything I've done this past 15 months is because I saw someone else had done it. So mm. it's just huge to be there for other people and also trust your instinct. I knew something was wrong and and I didn't know if I had trusted my instinct, but now I 110% mm. trust that mom instinct in me. And yeah, just trust that. Trust the people around you to help lift you up. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much again, Stacy. Thank you.